So now that we've described the Kuhnian model of science, um, and before we apply that model to business cycle research, uh, to try to understand the evolution of uh, business cycle models over time, I want to uh, briefly discuss uh, the structure of business cycle model. Uh, I want to show you what is a common structure that all these business cycles that have been developed in these different paradigms uh, share. So that'll, make, that'll be helpful to understand the commonality across business cycle models. Uh, and in general, it's just helpful to know what is that common structure when you deal with a new model or try to build your own um, business cycle model. So, um, <clears throat> so what's common to um, all these business cycle models? So first of all, all the business cycle models are uh, composed of households. You know, households are just the, you know, the people that make up the economy and they're the main elements uh, of any um, model of the business cycle. So let's start uh, by representing the households. All right. Um, so you know, generally, you'll have um, so mass one of households. Um, all the basic business cycle models that we're going to talk about assume a representative household. Um, so of course, it's possible to introduce heterogeneity in business cycle model, but this usually comes only uh, in a second time as these models are uh, refined. Um, so you know, you have the real business cycle model, and later on, there was a version with heterogeneity. You have the Dukesian model, which has a representative household, and then later on, uh, the Hank model came about, which is the Dukesian model with heterogeneity. But as a baseline, um, this model always have a representative household. Um, so, um, what do the households do? Uh, in this model, there is always um, two aspects, uh, two main tasks uh, that the households uh, do. So a first part of what they do is to consume. Right, so we have consumption here. And that's because um, the amount of consumption is going to uh, enter the utility function. Um, and then a second thing that households do uh, is uh, to work uh, and um, produce stuff. So these are the two main activities. Uh, then you know you can have um, extra stuff, but that's uh, that's the basic. Okay, uh, and so households are both workers and uh, consumers. So then, you know, when you work, you're going to produce goods, you're going to be uh, produce services, and then some households are you know all households are going to produce some good, produce some services, and then they are going to be. All these goods and services are going to be uh, consumed by other households. Uh, and of course, the key assumption in all of these business cycle models is that, um, you know, we are, we are not in an uh, economy where all the production uh, takes place at home and each household is a self-sufficient uh, unit. We always assume, and because that's what describes modern economies, that we are dealing with a market economy. So households are going to specialize in their line of work and they're going to produce like, you know, one specific type of good, one specific type of services, but they're going to consume a whole array of goods and services. And so uh, you need to have a market in which people uh, are going to sell their specific uh, 
production of goods and services, and that's going to be bought by all the other households. So it's because households consume a bit of everything, but they produce only one type of things that you need market to, uh, you know, through which people trade their goods and services and then use this income to buy uh, all the goods and services that they want to consume. Um, so the, implicitly, there's an assumption here um, that, that, you know, all the production is, is traded on a market. Uh, and then once it's traded, it becomes consumption. So uh, in the most simple micro model, actually, you can have only one market. So you could imagine that um, all workers are self-employed and they produce a good or a service uh, or a service. They uh, sell that uh, good or service on a product market and that's bought directly by other households. You could have a simple uh, model like this. So that would be really the simplest model possible. So you would have a market in the middle. And that would be a product market. So people would uh, bring all their uh, production of goods and services on that product market, and then that would be uh, purchased by um, the same households uh, would purchase all kind of goods and services on that product market. Now, in a, in a world like that, you wouldn't have any firms, and there would be only one price, uh, the price for uh, goods or uh, services. Uh, you, would, you would have one uh, amount of... Uh, of output uh, that's produced, one price, one quantity, and uh, you know things would work perfectly well. But in general, it's common, and that's be because in practice, you know, it's true that most people are not self-employed. Although that may change in the gig economy, for now, still most people are not self-employed. Most people are employed by firms, and then firms, the production takes place in the firm, and firms are going to sell uh, goods and services to households. So what's more common, instead of having just one product market like this, is in fact to have two markets, a labor market where you know, households sell their labor services and these services are purchased by firms, then a product market where uh, firms sell their production and that's purchased by, uh, by the household. So a more common, uh, in fact, a more, a more common structure would be to have uh, two markets So you would have first a labor market, okay, and then you would have a product market, Okay. And then you have an additional entity in the model. Now you would have not only household, but you would also have firms. And now in a world like this, um, Households are going to sell their labor services. You know, is you know, either you hire like a number of people or you hire hours on the labor market. That's going to be purchased by uh, by the firms. Production would take place inside the firm. So here you'd have to assume a production function. Then firms are going to sell this product or services that they manufacture on the product market, and that's going to be bought. Uh, that's going to be bought by the households. Um, so these are kind of the two, uh, and here I should uh, I should separate these things. These are kind of uh, two different options. 
you can have either the simple one market model or you can have a more complicated two market uh, two market model. Um, so these are the possible structure, and of course, then you can extend the model, refine them, uh, add extra market, you know, so if you think about. So usually, as you see here, we don't really um, talk about capital. You could have a capital market. The reason why it's not a focus in business cycle model is because we know that uh, in the short term over the business cycle, the capital stock, you know, doesn't really, it's not really cyclical. It doesn't really vary that much. You know, it grows very smoothly over time. So that's not something that we focus on when we think about business cycle. Um, what we think, what we focus on is always uh, variable related to labor market, you know, employment, unemployment, hours work. That's because all these elements are very cyclical. Uh, another thing that we think about uh, is, of course, output and, you know, prices and inflation. So everything that has to do with the product market, that's because all of this is also very cyclical. Um, and all the other quantities that are not very cyclical, they don't feature in basic business cycle models. Um, but you can always extend the model to incorporate this in. Uh, another type of market that you have mentioned here that always that features quite commonly are financial markets. So especially if you want to build a micro model that has something to say about um, financial crisis, or if you want to think about uh, uh, banking and so on. Um, 